Welcome everyone. My name is Jim Maughan and I'm going to be doing a demonstration for you of Enterprise Cyber Query uh, accessing Info-LN. Uh, now you can see from my screen that I've got access to a lot of different applications so the system works equally well with Bon or SAP or Microsoft or Oracle EBS or JD Edwards or Sightline, Glovia, Lawson, you name it. But for our uh, example today, I'm going to use a, a multi-company environment for Infor LN. Now before I get started, each of these modules can be turned on and off on a user by user basis or by user group basis. Um, but for our example, we're just going to go in and build a report. So I'm going to click on Cyber Query. The system takes me directly into the Cyber Query module. And the module begins by asking me if I'd like to create a list report. That's good old rows and columns. I could do a cross-tab or a summary or a pivot table-like report. I could also do plots and charts and labels of any size and format, or even start with an existing inquiry and modify that. But I'm going to just show you uh, a basic report today. So let's start with a list report, and I'll click the Next. The system says, okay, where would you like to start? What, would you, what is going to be your domain or your starting point within the files? Now, right now, I'm looking at the end user names for all my LN tables. Uh, just to prove that this really is good old LN data, let's look at the native table names. And if I scroll over here, you can see that, uh, you know, here's TFGLD106. If we go back over here, uh, you know, here's TDSLS400 or 401. Uh, that would be TDSLS040 or 041 in bond 4. <clears throat> but the system works the same whether you're dealing with Bond or LN or Bond 5 or really pretty much any other application. But since I'm an end user, let's go back to the end user viewpoint, which we call all tables. And I'm going to go look at my item master. I'm typing the word item. The system looks through my dictionary and says, okay, you have these tables that either have the word item in the name or in the description. Uh, if I click on general item data, you'll see that's the good old TCIBD001 table. So that's the item master. Well, let's just go up here. We're just going to start with that table. And the build report, I just click and drag or double click on fields to bring in them into my selection area. Uh, so I've got item, item type. I want to get description. And now I want to change the sequence. I want description next to item. So I'll just uh, pull item type down. Uh, I also want to get my inventory unit and I want to get the weight. So I've got five fields in there. That's a good starting. Uh, but I also want to add the, uh, the field for inventory on hand. Now in LN, inventory on hand is not in the item master, it's in a separate table, but I don't know where it is. So I'm just going to type in the dictionary, uh, in that filter box, the word hand. And the system looks through the dictionary and says, okay, you've got these six tables, five tables, that have the word hand in them. I'm going to grab it from this one called inventory. Uh, again, I'm going to click and drag. Now, this is an important part. ECQ did not ask me as the end user how to do the join. <clears throat> ECQ already knows how to do the join, and it always does joins on keyed fields, so the system is super fast. So it's already figured out the join or the link between general items and my inventory file. Okay, when I've got all the fields I want in my report, I just click the Next button. Uh, the next question the system asks me is if I would like a sort in the report. And I'm going to say yes, let's sort it based on item. Uh, next, it says, do you want to select? I'll say no, we're about selecting later on. So I'm just going to hit the word finish. System goes out there and grabs data just that quickly. <clears throat> now, if I want to resequence something, for example, uh, we had talked about the, this field called item type. Item type is that enumerated field. Let's drag it to the very front of my report. So there you'll see item type at the front. Now, I don't want to see ones and twos and tens. I want to see the, the name. And so what we do with ECQ is we actually bring in the naming convention and make it appear as if it were part of the table, even though all these fields from here down to here uh, really don't exist in the item master. We make them appear to the end user as if they were part of the item master. So if I want to translate item type, I just bring in this field called item type text. So here's item type text right next to item type. So you see item type 2 means manufactured, 
one means purchase, 10 means list, etc. And I can say, you know what? I don't, I don't even want to see item type. Whenever you have a question, all an end user has to do is click a right mouse. So here's my right mouse click, and I can delete that column, insert a copy, optimize the width, change the heading, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just going to say delete, and it's gone. Now, I told you I was going to do a selection. So let's say I only want to look at purchased items. So I'm going to click on a, purchase, a value of purchased and do a right mouse click. I'm going to come down here now and say, okay, only show me items where the records are equal to purchase. So I'm going to click purchased. Now I'm just looking at purchase parts. I'll click one more time. And I'm going to say duplicate values, hide my duplicate values. <clears throat> so now I'm just seeing, uh, you know, the very first purchased item. Um, okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now I want to show you how to do a calculation. So I've got inventory on hand. Let's also bring in here uh, standard cost. And again, in LN, standard cost is in a separate table. This thing called standard cost by item. I'm going to grab my amount field. I'm just going to drag and drop it. But again, notice, ECQ didn't ask me how to do the join. It's already figured that out as part of the dictionary build. Uh, and by the way, to do the dictionary build for LN takes about an hour. You download the software from our, from our test site, and within an hour, you can be writing reports against your LN or your bond data. Uh, okay, I'm going to highlight two columns just by holding down my control key. And I'm going to do my right mouse click again. Let's try that again. Uh, right mouse click, and I'm going to say, let's... Uh, I could either concatenate or group. I could add, subtract, multiply, or divide. I want to multiply in this case. So now I've got standard cost times uh, my quantity on hand. The system tries to guess at a column header. doesn't guess correctly very often. So I'm going to call this field extended cost <clears throat> and say OK. I'm going to right mouse click one more time and say sort that column descendingly. I'll make that the primary sort in my report. I just want to see my most expensive items up at the top of the report. Looking good. Okay, now one more thing. I noticed that uh, my default uh, is for four characters precision or four decimal places. I'm going to change that. I'm going to do a right mouse click again, come down to my item properties, and I'm going to click on the numeric tab. And I'm going to say only show me two decimal places. Say OK. And now you see we've got two decimal places here in the extended cost area. So you'll see that ECQ is very easy to use. It's all drag and drop. And you'll also notice that the buttons are very much like Excel. So if a user knows Excel, they'll pick up ECQ very quickly. So new, open, save, print, print preview, cut, copy, paste, uh, standard Excel buttons. The next button over is my undo button, the most popular button in any package. If I click undo, You'll notice now I'm back to four decimal places. If I click Redo, now I'm back to two. And it's unlimited levels of undo and redo in ECQ. The next button over is my Run button. When I click the Run button, watch this, the next button to the right. The next button to the right is the Stop button. Anytime I want, I can click my Stop button and say to the underlying database, hey, I've got enough rows. So you don't need to read 34 million rows of data just to start laying out a report. Just read a few thousand and say you're good. <clears throat> Next button over is the scheduling. If I click on that, it says, okay, you got to give us, say this is the name. Let's call this one uh, uh, LN underscore one. <clears throat> oh, it says I already used that name before. I'll also replace it. So, okay, so it says, do you want to schedule? I'll say yes. Yeah. It says, which queue do you want to use? I've only got one queue on my little system, so we'll go with that. The system says, would you, would you like to submit it for immediate execution? or submit with a pattern. Let's say I like this report. I want to create a pattern. I'm going to run this, re this report um, starting at 4 o'clock uh, a.m. Uh, when we'll start it tomorrow. <coughs> and I'm going to repeat it every third weekday from now until the end of the year. So I'll just click, click, click. And now I've got a batch job. This is going to run uh, every third week, weekday. <clears throat> Actually, going to cancel that. Uh, but uh, let's keep going across the button. So the next button over is the Excel button. Now, with ECQ, it's got a great Excel interface. It doesn't just print to Excel like Excel was a sheet of paper. As a matter of fact, if I span this out a little bit, and let's scroll down here to the bottom. Uh, notice this report total. It actually comes in as a function. 
So again, it's not just printing to Excel like it was a sheet of paper. We actually output uh, maxes and mins and totals and you know various formula. So that makes it real nice. I'll also show you the Excel add-in a little bit more. Uh, here's the ribbon for the CyberQuery Excel add-in. Now this does require Excel 2003 or above, um, but it lets you insert reports, change the server, the application, the uh, edit all kinds of input parameters or modify the report, basically using the same screens you've seen me go through so far. So it gives you a lot of power, lets you put multiple reports in a workbook, you can refresh a single report or multiples, but it gives the end user kind of the best of both worlds. It gives them access to all of their production LN data and yet still have access to any of their Excel functions to be able to create local calculations or forecasts or whatever they might need. Okay, let's get out of Excel <clears throat> for a few minutes. Uh, and just continue across the top with the button. So if I click here, you'll see the report in HTML. Here's the report in PDF. If I click here, it's going to call your, the email server and basically lets you email this report in any kind of format you want. And now these buttons can all be used in conjunction with each other because you may want to schedule a job where the report goes out as an Excel spreadsheet and is sent to a distribution list you know, via email. So again, all that together. Uh, if the next button over is the keyboard. If I click on the keyboard, here's the code behind that report. Uh, and I can toggle back and forth between the drag and drop and the syntax just that easily. Uh, I'm currently in the scroll. If you look next to the cursor, you'll see a little scroll next to it. That lets me do the drag in and dropping. The next button over is the drill. I'll show you that in a minute. Or actually, I'll show you that as part of the next demonstration. Uh, okay, the next button over is the paintbrush. Paintbrush lets you control font, style, and color. So I'm going to highlight that column. I'll say, let's make that print bigger. I'll make it uh, 18 points in size. I'm going to bold it. And I'll make the background color. I'll make it kind of a light gray. <clears throat> so there we go. Now the other nice thing I can do with the paintbrush is I can conditionally highlight. For example, I know my controller, and if he sees inventory on hand greater than or equal to 100, he's going to want to reduce the inventory. So I'm going to add a highlight, and I'm going to say anytime you see inventory on hand greater than or equal to 100, let's uh, we'll make the background color of those rows uh, yellow and I'll apply it to the whole line. So we'll say OK. And now you can see everywhere where we've got inventory on hand greater than or equal to 100. And again, if you think that's ugly, you click Undo. It's gone. If you, eh, I kind of miss it. Click Redo, and it's back. So again, that, that easy to do. Uh, next button over is the camera. Camera lets you drop in any kind of logo. So I'm going to delete that logo and add a new logo. And I'll just pick, I'll pick 3M. And now we can make that the default page header, so all our reports begin with that 3M logo. Uh, next button over is the border tool. Border lets you draw boxes and banners just to highlight areas. I'm going to do a right mouse click and click on my border properties and say, let's make this look striped. And I'll kind of alternate between a green and a white stripe. We'll say OK, and there you go. And now the nice thing about all this formatting is if I click on Excel, all the formatting except for the logo, goes down to Excel. Okay, so we've done that and that. Um, let's see what else we want to do here. Um, you know, so again, it's very easy. If I came in here and wanted to drag a new field, I just go click and drag. So the way the product works is the left-hand column is your view into the dictionary. This, uh, so the second column is our selection criteria, and we can add more windows or less windows just by clicking there. Uh, we can do joins, manual joins, or create a new file relationship by clicking on the green folder. But really, all the power you need is right there for the end user, just with a left mouse and a right mouse. Again, so if I click on a column, right mouse click, shows you everything you ever wanted to know about that particular column. So this wraps up the, the first level demo. I encourage you to take a, take a look at the second level demo, showing the summary capabilities uh, within ECQ. But thank you for your time. And again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to call me or email me. Thank you very much.